in the journey spanning millions of years of evolution on Earth. Reptiles have undergone a remarkable development from prehistoric times to the present day. From primitive and rugged creatures inhabiting harsh environments to the diverse and sophisticated reptiles, thriving in various habitats worldwide. Their evolutionary is a tale of wonder and adaptation. The evolutionary race focused on hunting and predation has led to the development of many remarkable or terrifying traits in many animals. These traits help us improve our ability to hunt or protect ourselves from predators, leading to incredible diversity and adaptability in nature. However, there is a group of animals that have evolved in a very unique way. It's a snake. Snakes evolve from animals in the game that have undergone independent development. In the process, they lost their limbs and claws, leading to longer bodies and losing their former ability to move quickly. However, this leads to a strange secret that is their evil place. Due to the loss of limbs and claws, snakes have had to develop new hunting strategies, such as vipers or venom injections, to survive in harsh environments. Losing limbs and claws not only makes hunting more difficult, but also reduces the snake's ability to defend itself against predators. However, snakes adapted by developing independently. This evolutionary process is not only a classic example of adaptation in nature, but also proof of the power of evolution. Snakes are one of the most venomous animals on the planet. Their toxins can kill prey or predators with just a small bite. This has made us hunters of unpleasant odors in the natural world. Research into the chemical properties of snakes has yielded interesting discoveries about their range in and development. DNA evidence shows that snakes are most closely related to venomous lizards and spiders and may share venomous nests. This evolutionary process may have taken place millions of years ago and led to the rich diversity of modern snakes. Discoveries about the chemical properties of snakes also raise new questions about how animals adapt to their environments. The loss of limbs and claws has posed great challenges for snakes, but they have found ways to adapt and develop venom to protect themselves and hunt. This proves that evolution is not just a random process but also the result of adaptation and development over millions of years in the natural world. Snakes are a prime example of the power and versatility of chemical processes in the natural world. The chemistry of snakes is a complex process that reveals many secrets about their origin and history. Initially, snakes evolved from a group of lizards. It was not until 1997 that the first transitional fossil information of a snake called Pachyricus was discovered. This discovery adds credit the close relationship between snakes and the marine reptile Mosasaur also demonstrates chemical processes. It seems that both snakes and mosasaurs may have originated from the same group of aquatic lizards but then evolved in different directions. The Kyricus has introduced new species of snakes originating from aquatic environments, especially a primitive snake named Najash that lives on land. Providing further evidence for this hypothesis, ancient snakes such as Najash and Denalisa patagonica have also determined some important details about snake chemistry. Najash, a terrestrial snake, has robust hind limbs and has retained some limb features, indicating its primitive and diverse history. Their chemistry was also tied to hearing. With discoveries about bone structure and the ear canal, ancient snakes developed highly specialized basal structures for hunting, with unique hunting strategies to adapt to their habitat and hunting methods. Some evolved to reduce size and lose limbs, becoming efficient burrowers, while others modified their teeth to become venomous fangs, enhancing their hunting abilities. These discoveries would not have been possible without the support of scientific researchers who have contributed significantly to understanding the history and evolution of snakes. Understanding these complex processes is not only a significant advance in natural science research, but also deepens our understanding of the diversity and specialization of life on Earth. Crocodiles are not only one of the most fearsome predators, thanks to features such as interlocking teeth and armored bodies, but are also one of the last remaining large reptiles. Although they look like reptiles, they are actually more closely related to birds, while birds have undergone evolution and diversified into millions of different forms. Crocodiles have not changed much and have very similar fossils, making 
than one of the few living reptiles. However, it is not true that similar relatives living more than 200 million years ago did not need to adapt. Over time because the underwater environment is too favorable for their survival. In fact, crocodiles have evolved and changed a lot. The ancestors of crocodiles and birds, which were closely related and had less time to evolve and adapt to different environments, emerged 240 million years ago during the Triassic period. They look very crocodiles and birds both descended from a group of reptiles called archosaurs, which emerged after a mass extinction event before the Triassic period, known as the Permian extinction. Although why they have become so successful is not completely understood. There is a popular theory that they are effective, more productive than other animals in the arid. Conditions of the early Triassic with low oxygen levels, they quickly spread and evolved to dominate many hunting environments around the world at the time. Determining where the ancestors of birds and crocodiles are is a difficult problem. However, animals like Hesperus such as are thought to be more closely related to crocodiles, especially alligators. We know that one group is more closely related to birds because their ankle bones have adapted to provide stability when they run. And as a result, they perform significantly better in training. Practice. Among birds, this Arkansian chylosaur is called a metatarsalia, meaning the Delia crater ankylosaur has a closely related to primitive dinosaurs, able to move onto legs over long distances before dinosaurs could fully balance onto legs. Species developed these abilities, and this was the beginning of that process. About 100 million years later, dinosaurs gradually became birds. However, Arkansas specializes in early Triassic ancestors, including species that were also bipedal. Some of them were even adapted to resemble early dinosaurs like the Fijia, but they were actually more closely related to crocodiles. The reason we know they weren't just dinosaurs is because even though they walked onto legs, they had very different anatomy in their hip and ankle bones. At the end of the Triassic, an important event occurred in another group although less severe than the Permian extinction. Nearly all species in Arkansas are extinct, except for dinosaurs and another group called alligators, which are ancestors of today's crocodiles. Crocodiles survived but dinosaurs actually benefited from extinction. The Triassic extinction event eliminated most herbivores, including a group called Decinodontes, which is actually a distant branch of this family of animals. The largest species of mammals and carnivores, called Rasukians, exist in Arkansas and can reach lengths of up to about 7 meters. However, all of these species became extinct by the end of the 20th century, during the Triassic and early Jurassic periods. Dinosaurs dominated every corner of life and became the most dominant animals in the ecosystem. Meanwhile, crocodiles thrive in water environments such as rivers, lakes, and swamps. Some of the earliest known crocodiles, such as Gania follidates, appeared in the early Jurassic period. It is reported that they were semi aquatic because their fossils were discovered in aquatic habitats. However, they also possess a feature called the gula valve, which allows them to keep their mouth open underwater while breathing through their nostrils. Gonio follidates looked very similar to modern crocodiles, and in Triassic Arkansas, they evolved into long and powerful armored. Reptiles that raised the bar for modern crocodile habitats, Goniophonides took this to the next level and are compatible with any modern crocodile species. Today, although they have been around for more than 190 million years since the time you mentioned, they still have conical teeth similar to modern crocodiles and this shape is used to grip prey and pull them back, return to the water instead of slashing at them. Like most terrestrial predators, this suggests they were ambush predators like modern crocodiles, which is why they look so much like modern crocodiles. The lifestyle of aquatic ambush predators does not depend on rapid movement or improved metabolism, as they do not need to pursue prey over long distances and do not depend on one type of prey specifically. Other animals need water to drink. In contrast, while modern large mammals, by about 190 million years ago, the age of the dinosaurs had diverged into clades, including modern crocodiles, alligators, and gary's owls. 
They had common ancestor about 90 to 100 million years ago. Nearly all species in this group share a common ancestor. The mammals are more closely related to each other than modern crocodiles. But this does not mean that modern crocodiles did not undergo transformation during the Jurassic or Cretaceous period. In fact, modern crocodiles are the only surviving members of a much more diverse group of reptiles. From the early Jurassic period, a group of crocodiles called Thalatosuchians have adapted to live and hunt entirely in marine environments. And some species such as Teleosauridae have become more sleek and better adapted to hunting at sea than on land. Land. Land.metrorenchids have evolved further and transformed their limbs into flippers, even growing some flukes in their tails. Several species of crocodiles evolved into the largest ocean predators of their time, including Madagascar, which had one of the largest terrestrial predators of the Cretaceous period. That were actually aquatic predators, ocean. Crocodiles called Barasukas were adapted to operate on land and competed directly with dinosaurs. Some semi-aquatic species evolved into crocodiles that were significantly larger than modern crocodiles, such as Sarcosuchus. These crocodiles existed about 125 million years ago and could be twice as big as the Nile crocodile. There are indications that they may have swallowed giant dinosaurs at the water's edge. However, their skull shape differs from that of modern crocodiles and may have been used to swallow prey larger than themselves, although this is not true of crocodiles. Other great people lived at the same time at the water's edge. The Americas are home to a larger crocodile called Dana such as, which can grow to about 12 meters long. Sarcosuchus, a species of crocodile, are a group of crocodiles that no longer exist. However, it was a true crocodile and more closely related to the American alligator than to modern crocodiles. As it increased in size, this species probably lived like most modern crocodiles, but evolved to become larger to hunt larger prey in the late Cretaceous period. Asteroid impacts, wildfires and tsunamis have destroyed much of the plant life globally. This lack of vegetation led to a lack of food for large herbivorous dinosaurs, as well as large carnivorous dinosaurs. The Komodo dragon, also known as Varanus komodensis, is a giant lizard species found on islands in Indonesia such as Komodo, Rinka, Flores, and Jili Motan, as a member of the Varanidae family. They are the largest lizard species still in existence, reaching a maximum length of about 3 meters 10 feet and weighing around 70 kilograms 150 pounds. With their impressive size, these dragons play a dominant role in the ecosystems of the islands they inhabit. Komodo dragons hunt and prey on a variety of animals including invertebrates, birds, and mammals. Some believe they possess venom, with glands in their lower jaws secreting some toxic proteins. While the biological significance of these proteins remains unclear, they are known to produce blood clotting agents. The hunting method of Komodo dragons is unique in the reptile world. They primarily feed on small Indonesian deer but are also known to scavenge on carrion, Komodo. Dragons occasionally prey on humans. Their mating season extends from May to August. With egg-laying typically occurring in September, a clutch can contain up to 20 eggs, often laid in abandoned bird nests or self-dug burrows. Eggs take about 7 to 8 months to hatch, usually in April when insect prey is abundant. Komodo dragon hatchlings are vulnerable to predation, so they often seek refuge in trees to avoid predators and cannibalistic adults. They take about 8 to 9 years to reach maturity and can live up to 30 years. Western scientists first discovered Komodo dragons in 1910. Their large size has made them a subject of interest in zoos, however, their distribution has been shrinking due to human activities, leading to their listing as a vulnerable species by the IUCN, Indonesia has laws protecting them, and the Komodo National Park was established in 1980 to support conservation efforts. The developmental and evolutionary process of the Komodo dragon begins with the genus Varanus, a group of lizards originating from Asia around 40 million years ago. This group later migrated to Australia, where they evolved into giant species. With the pinnacle being the recently extinct Megalania, 
This can be explained by the lack of competition from placental mammal predators. Round 15 million years ago, when the Australian continent collided with Southeast Asia, larger monitor lizards moved back to the current Indonesian archipelago, expanding their range to the eastern part of Timor Island. It was believed that the Komodo dragon developed from ancestors in Australia about 4 million years ago. However, recent fossil discoveries in Queensland suggest that the Komodo dragon actually evolved in Australia before migrating to Indonesia. During the last ice age, the sea level significantly dropped, exposing large continental shelves that Komodo dragons inhabited. However, as the sea level rose again, they gradually became isolated within the confines of the current islands. Fossils from the Pliocene era, such as Varanus civilensis in Asia, have similarly sized to modern Komodo dragons. This indicates their ability to thrive in competitive environments. With mammalian predators until climate change and extinction events mark the beginning of the Pleistocene era. Genetic analysis has shown that Komodo dragons are the closest relative's sister group of Varanus, various sharing a common ancestor with several other lizard species including the crocodile monitor Varanus salvadori in New Guinea. A study in 2021 revealed that during the Miocene epoch, Komodo dragons hybridized with the ancestors of sand monitor lizards in Australia, providing further evidence of their past presence in Australia. The tuatara is a lizard-like reptile and the only surviving species in the entire Rhynchocephaly clade. It is found only on small islands around New Zealand. The Tuatara is the sole member of the last of the four groups of reptiles, the others being crocodiles, lizards, and turtles. Many reptiles in this group have lived on Earth in the past, since the age of dinosaurs, so the Tuatara is sometimes considered a living fossil. They can survive in low temperatures, round 55 to 57 degrees Fahrenheit or 13 to 14 degrees Celsius. Few other reptiles can thrive in such cold conditions. Tuatar typically live an average of more than 60 years, but some have been recorded living up to 120 years. Tuatar have a third eye on the top of their head, which is a sensory organ to detect life, helping them hunt in the dark. It is worth noting that the Tiatara is considered the fastest evolving reptile in the world. This is surprising because the Tiatara, a creature found only in New Zealand, has changed little in appearance since its ancestors lived alongside dinosaurs. 225 million years ago, Tuatara can live up to 100 years, and many individuals only reach maturity after 10 to 15 years. They resemble miniature dinosaurs and are cold-blooded reptiles. The evolution of crocodiles, snakes, tuataras, and Komodo dragons is a remarkable testament to the power and adaptability of the evolutionary process. Over millions of years, they have developed and adapted to diverse habitats across the planet. From lush tropical rainforests to arid deserts and even underwater environments, Crocodiles, with their imposing appearance and superior strength, represent perfect adaptations to freshwater habitats. They have evolved into formidable and successful predators, maintaining their top position in freshwater ecosystems. Snakes, with their agility and cunning hunting skills, are a testament to evolution in predation and survival in the harsh environments of deserts. Forests and even underwater, Tuataras, the last surviving species of reptile in New Zealand, are living relics of the past. Their long-term existence and unique skeletal structure demonstrate their ability to adapt to the unique habitats of this island nation. And finally, Komodo dragons, with their colossal size and astonishing hunting prowess, are icons of adaptation to diverse and challenging habitats across the Indonesian archipelago. These species are not only unique creatures, but also living testaments to adaptation and evolution in the natural world. Their diversity and strength are essential parts of Earth's ecosystems, 
and provide endless inspiration for humans in understanding and preserving the natural world. Round us!